Now, in this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about using PubMed. PubMed is a very powerful tool for conducting research in the health sciences. It's able to search through a lot more articles than CINAHL, but is also missing a lot of the features that make that database so great. It can also be frustrating to use, so I'd like to offer an introduction. However, there's a lot that I don't have time to cover in this short video, so if you'd like to learn more about how to use it and how it can better help you, please don't hesitate to reach out to your friendly librarian. I'll be happy to schedule a research consultation where we can take a look at PubMed or other resources together and learn more about their features. To get there, we begin at the library homepage and click on the Databases link at the top left of the page. This takes us to a list of databases arranged by subject. I can scroll down to the ends and select Nursing to be taken to those databases that are best for nursing research. We can see that this is a pretty long list, and at the very top of it, under Top Databases, is the link for PubMed. PubMed is a great place to search for articles on your topic. There are a few ways we can do this. Of course, if you're confident with your search terms, you can always just enter them here and begin searching. But for me, I like to be sure. So instead of searching right away, I'm going to look up my topic. So to do that, I'm not going to enter any search terms here, but rather to click on the Mesh Database link below the search window. This takes us to another search page, only this one isn't used to search for articles, but rather for subjects. So I'm going to put in one part of my topic here, which for today's exercise will be skin cancer. So let's imagine that I'm searching for information on skin cancer. Once I've clicked search, I'm taken to a page featuring a lot of information. The biggest one is at the top, where we are informed that the appropriate subject heading for skin cancer would be skin neoplasms. If I was interested in just searching for every article in PubMed that was about skin cancer, I can click Add to Search Builder here, and then we can see that our subject heading has been added. Then, to search for articles, I just click Search PubMed, and I'm taken to a list of all of these articles, over 126,000 in all. That's a lot of articles. But let's imagine for a moment we might be focusing on a particular aspect of skin cancer research. One feature on this page is that we're given subheadings, which we can use to narrow down our topic. Let's imagine for a moment that we were interested in researching the treatment of skin cancer with radiation therapy. I can tick this radiotherapy box and then do the same thing. Click Add to Search Builder, and we'd see it appears again, only this time it's more specific and includes radiotherapy. When I click Search PubMed, we're taken to another list of articles, only this time, instead of looking at 126,000 articles about skin cancer, we're looking at around 3,500 instead. These are all about the treatment of skin cancer with radiation. That still might seem like a lot of articles, but that's a huge reduction. And we're still not done. One thing we could try is to add more subject headings into our search. Even with a subject like this, we're usually looking for more specific information. Perhaps we might be looking for a specific type of study, or research this topic pertaining to a specific type of patient. Perhaps we're only looking for articles from nursing journals. If you're familiar with CINAHL or OneSearch, you're used to seeing a large number of filters on the left of the results. On PubMed, we have a few options, but nothing as robust as on those databases. However, there is a way to add more of these. I can click on Additional Filters to be given more options to add. This gives us the option of adding things like article type, age and gender of patient, and other helpful ways to narrow down our search. If I just wanted to look for clinical studies, I can add it by ticking this box and clicking Show at the bottom. Once I do, it now appears in my filters. I can select this, and my results are automatically updated to show only clinical studies. I might also be searching for more recent articles, so I can use this date slider here to say just search for the past five years. That brings back 13 articles on the topic of treatment of skin cancer with radiation, all of which describe clinical studies and were published in the last five years. Using these limiters is the best way to narrow down the results that you're getting back, while still making sure that they are relevant. Now that we've gotten our results list down to such a small number, it's time to start looking at these articles. So let's take a look at number two here. One of the first things we're going to see on this page is that the actual article isn't here. If we wanted to access the article, we would use the links on the top right corner, which read full text links. 
But before we click on these, there's a lot of information to take in on this page. We can see that the abstract is listed here. But if we look to the right, we see the sort of table of contents for this page. If I scroll down, I start seeing more information about the article. First, PubMed provides us with some similar articles, which may or may not be helpful to our research. But if we keep going, we can see the next section is very interesting. Cited by 11 articles. Now, a lot of the times, if we find an article, we can look in the list of references to find other sources. But those reference lists only feature sources that are older than the article we're using. This cited by tool gives us a similar list of articles, only these are, by definition, newer than the article we're looking at. This can be a great way to locate articles on similar topics, as well as to track the impact of the article within the discipline. Going down further, there's more helpful information about this article. We see the references. We also see the type of study featured, which is a clinical trial. And there's a list of MeSH terms. If you can remember, these are the subject terms which we were searching in the beginning of this video. I might see one that works with my current search, such as this one, which is the treatment of melanoma with radiation. I can click on this link, and it gives us the choice to look up all the articles in PubMed with the subject term, or we can look back into the MeSH database, which we started this video. We can also add this term to our current search. Subject searches are a great way to refine your research and to browse through relevant topics. Finally, we can also see the specific substances discussed in this article and are also listed down here. If I click on these, I'm given the same options as with the subject headings. As I mentioned earlier, you'll find the links to access the actual articles in the top right corner of the article. These links are going to look different depending on which page we're on. Most of the time, we're looking for this one, which reads, find it. This link is for the Pollock Library, and it's usually going to be the one that we're looking for. That's why it's important to go through the library's website to access PubMed. If I just Google PubMed and follow the link, it wouldn't know that I'm affiliated with Cal State Fullerton, and this link would not be here. Clicking on this link will take us back to the Pollock Library's website, and when we do, we can see we have this article available in several databases. Of course, even if we didn't have any access through the library, remember that you can always request these articles to be delivered to you free of charge by requesting them through interlibrary loan. We can locate just about any article, so if you're looking for an article and it comes back as no full text available, you can always sign into the library using this link, sign in for more options, and you'll be guided through the process. Going back to the PubMed page, I just want to look one more time at the access links here. As I mentioned, the links here are going to look different depending on which article we're looking at. Most of the time, these other links will ask you for money to access the articles, which is why we always try to use the Find It at Pollock Library link. However, sometimes we can find articles that we can access directly from PubMed. These are usually identified by the words free or open access. In this case, it's probably just easiest to click on these. As we can see in this article, there is a free version hosted at PubMed Central. We can click on this link and be taken to the full text of the article. That's it for this introduction to PubMed. I know there's a lot of information presented here, so don't hesitate to revisit this video. There's also a lot more about PubMed that I don't have time to fit in this video, so if you'd like to learn more about the advanced functions like saving articles or searches, don't hesitate to reach out to your subject librarian and we'll be happy to assist you. If you're not sure who your subject librarian is, you can always look on the subject guides or on the library homepage here. For more immediate assistance, our virtual reference desk is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Thanks again, and good luck with your research.